you know, really special person uh, that's helped me in my life too. So, um, but this is a big win for us, really good win for us, really good team win. Uh, we showed what uh, our team's about. We've been showing this for a long time. Uh, you know, just uh, this TGIF, this togetherness, this, this gratitude for having the opportunity just to be here uh, and having forming our own identity, which seems to be every week. I know it's, uh, it looks simple to you. Uh, it's a new identity every week. It's a new personnel that you have to really rely on without evidence. And I think that's really difficult to do. And you need a really good team to do that. Uh, that's why I said they're fun to coach, because they don't care who gets the credit. They go out there and, and play really hard. And uh, they focus on, on the, the things that are really important to each other. And that's it. Internal expectations, and that's it. So uh, a lot of football left. It's 1-0. Uh, and one and zero in the Northwestern Championship season, and we told them that. Listen, if you ever want to be a Big Ten West champ, you got to go beat the Big Ten West champs. And uh, you know they did that tonight for a one and zero victory. Uh, with all due respect to, to Northwestern, I mean, they're, they're the kings of the West until somebody dethrones them. So uh, we got four games left in the regular season. Well, twenty eight days, twenty nine days. And we got a lot of football to play, and we have a lot to get better at, and we have a lot of people to find out who can play running back. But that will open up for questions. PJ, you talked about your identity. Just running the ball for 300 yards again, holding the 14 points. It seems like those are the two of the hallmarks of what this team is. Well, the time of possession was 40 to, you know, 40 to, uh, 40 to 20. I think that, that's critical. Uh, I think Mike Sanford's done a great job of calling games. Uh, him and Matt Simon. I mean, our whole staff, Ryan, I mean, Kenny Burns, and Brian Callahan, Clay Patterson. I mean, we just have good chemistry uh, of everybody knowing what their role is and, and bringing value to it. You know, but everybody knows we're going to run the football. And I don't think that's a secret. I don't think we're catching anybody off guard by that. It's just how we run the football. You know, remember is that, you know, the, the what people can judge you on because those are titles and everybody sees that from the outside. But it's really hard internally to measure the how. How hard our team plays and how they play for each other, that's, that's not measurable by the outside. That's only from the inside. Uh, I get a chance, and I'm grateful I get the chance to see that every single day. Uh, and, you know, I thought our defense did a, a tremendous job of getting more opportunities back for us, They've given us short fields. Um, you know, I mean, Justin Wally's touchdown, I mean, really kind of gave us a spark right at the beginning of the game. And then, uh, you know, you got a pretty good offensive line and tight ends when, when, the, when the third string linebacker goes into the game and scores a touchdown. Uh, but he also rushed for like 70,000 yards in high school or something like that. So. Uh, we've done that in practice the last few weeks. We, we, we've moved some guys, uh, not moved them from their position, but we've moved them for a contingency plan just in case. Uh, Bryce went down today. You know, uh, Kai was down for a while, and, and we were down to Bucko. And, uh, and then we had you know, Derek on deck. And, uh, you know, so, again, that, that, those are the cards we're dealt. I mean, is it, is, it, is it the most advantageous position to be in? No. Did you ask for it? No. Uh, is it here? Yes. But uh, we're going to embrace it. We're not going to ever use it as an excuse. We're going to find a way to be able to keep moving forward, keep rowing the boat, and see what we can do. Uh, but again, I, I, complimentary football is the word. Just continue to keep coming out. Uh, complimentary football with, with our guys playing for each other and understanding situational football. I and mean, that's a really smart football team that we have. Really smart football team who, who understands situations, understands who we are. And I think that you have to know who you truly are to be successful. And, uh, and then be yourself. I think one of the biggest things to be tough is being authentic. And we got a tough football team because they're real and authentic. And I think that's one of the biggest measuring sticks of being a tough football team. Next week's another uh, matchup against another ground and pound, run first kind of team. And it just, I mean, you're from here, you've been here, you grew up here. The Big Ten, that, that theme, you know, of the run first, does this feel like this is the most like Big Ten style you've ever seen in the league or at least the division right now? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think even Purdue has a lot of success running the football here and there. You know, I mean, and they're a little bit probably pass first, right? But um, when they started running the ball, their offense got even maybe more explosive. Um, but the, you know, the big t this is what I, I dreamed of when I was a little kid. You know, I mean, Big Ten football. I used to come to Northwestern football games with my, my buddy's dad, who graduated from here, and I just I, I was always infatuated with Big Ten football. And uh, I think Heather asked me one of my dreams, and I said just. I want to be in the Big Ten one day. I never got to play in it. Um, really wasn't a coach in it. And, and you have an opportunity to be in, I think, the best league in the country because it has a, I think it has an identity. Uh, not that other leagues don't, they do, but we have an identity. And it's, you know, it's, it's October, November, December in the, in the Midwest. 
and that's where I grew up. And I think the, across the Big Ten, uh, that, that's what our league's really been about. Uh, when you get to November, you just never know what kind of weather you're going to get, and you have to be able to run the football. We know people are going to do everything they can to take it away, and we just got to continue to be creative enough and find schemes to, to be able to move football down the field, uh, respectively. And PJ, as, a, as effective as your defense has been this year, are you a little surprised that you haven't had more defensive touchdowns? I, uh, I, I think there's that, that's controllable and not controllable. Uh, I really do. Uh, I think that there's uh, what, the way you play defense, how you play defense. Uh, are your eyes? Are you an eye to the quarterback only? Right. I think that might give you some more opportunities to be able to make some plays with tip passes. Uh, what are you doing up front? Are you just tipping balls? Are you rushing passers? Are you get after sacks? How you? How are you? Pressuring with the four, um, are you playing just man coverage with eyes, you know, on your man, or are you playing more zone? Um, you know, I think that it, we're patient with it. You know, when it presents itself, we want it. We want to be violent around the ball, create plays, create takeaways. We've had a lot of tip balls that just haven't been caught, and sometimes you're in the right spot, sometimes you're not. Um, but today was really big to get one of those. I knew that we were, you know, we were due for one of those at some point, and it's fitting that our true freshman Justin Wally. Uh, got that done, and you know his mom. Uh, you know his brother plays at Mississippi State, and his mom has got maroon cowbells everywhere, and I'm sure she was shaking those cowbells. You know she's got maroon ones with Mississippi State on, and she's also got some some gopher cowbells too. So I'm sure she was shaking those pretty good with her son uh, going in the end zone today. But he's a special player, and you know we, we'd like to have five of those a week. We'd love to, you know. Uh, but everybody gets scholarships on the other end. They're pretty coached. They're pretty well coached too. How important was Mike Brown Stevens today for you? Uh, he was incredible. I mean, he's, you talk about a guy who's truly matured, um, grown up. He's been able to respond. The biggest difference Michael Brown's been able to do is respond to adversity. When you're a young player and you get here and everything's new in your life, the ability to respond to hard things is really difficult. And Michael Brown's had plenty of things happen to him, personal life, football life, on the field, off the field, that have been really hard, really hard for a young person his age to deal with. And all he's done is put his oar in water and uh, oar in the water and row. Has not been easy, but you can start to see what he's becoming. He's got three years after this of eligibility, like a lot of our guys do. So, uh, but he, you know, he's become a big weapon for us. And with, with Chris, we always talk about uh, Heather. Always reminds me of this, which is you know that's why she's incredible. Is because you know sometimes I get into my own little you know mindsets that you know. Mo goes down, Trey goes down, you know, Bryce goes down. You got Bucko and Kai, and you know. The, they're meant to grow up quicker. Crab goes down. You know, Dalen's gone for a while. And now you got Michael Brown being the guy, and Daniel Jackson now out. I mean, that, he stepped up in a huge role. Um, but you know, he he's got somebody very close to him in his life that has a spotlight on him a lot, and I'm sure that he's helped him along the way. Uh, and he's very close to his uncle, and I know that he's helped him a lot. Um, you know, and it, it's just this is this is why we coach college football. To watch guys like this mature, grow into, into young men, and he's a great example of that. Is Bryce's season in jeopardy? I, I don't know enough. Um, I just know it's a lower leg injury. Uh, we'll get more when we get back to the Twin Cities, and uh, I'll let you know that as you know, we keep moving forward. PJ, how do you let next man up be more than a cliche when you are tested the way you guys are, particularly in the backfield? Well, I think that, you know, it's a, it is. It's a, it's a slogan. It's a cliche. Everybody uses it, right? But as I went back to what makes somebody tough, authenticity, being real, actually doing it, showing you're willing to do it, and then riding with it. And I think that's what we've been able to do. Um, you know, we recruit guys to be able to come in here and play right away, right? And I tell them all of that. I said, every single one of you are being recruited to come here, play, and earn a starting spot. And if you can do that right away, good for you. I tell our entire football team. Right? All the time. Look, no offense to all of you, but my job as the head football coach is to keep the talent, the skill moving up. Your job is to keep your job. My job is to almost out-recruit you. But if you keep getting better, you won't ever be out-recruited. And it's that constant drive to change your best and get better that I think you start to see that with our team. And then they're close. They love hanging out with each other. Our culture is designed to spend a lot of time together off the field. You know, as all the things we do and, you know, I mean... You know, our hyperculture is about connectivity. It's about serving and giving. It's about serving your teammates. It's about for each other. And, uh, in a world that sometimes, you know, doesn't want you to do that. So, um, again, cliche, next man up, next man in, but tough when it's authentic and real and they're doing it. 
One or two more for Coach? What uh, what was the, the play call for Tanner's run, and, and then when he said him? <laughs> we were talking in the huddle. It was a few plays before. I was like, hey, listen, don't be afraid. Right? If the read's right, yeah. pull it, because if you do, it's going to come spitting out, and over and over and over and over and over and over, and then the next thing, somebody cheats with their shoulder, and it pulls. You know, that, that's what a manager does. You know, Tanner Morgan's played a lot of football here. The entire organization trusts Tanner Morgan. Right? I mean, you have to write what you have to write, but the entire organization, that's why a lot of you came in my office, we're talking, and we're like, what are you going to do? They don't blink. It's Tanner Morgan. I mean, he is one of the toughest young men I've ever met, one of the most mature men I've ever met. He's already engaged. I mean, this guy has played a ton of football, won a ton of games for us, and he just, everybody feels better when Tanner's on the field, including me, because he knows how to manage the game. He's a coach on the field. He's the offensive coordinator on the field, thinking like Mike Sanford, thinking like Matt Simon, thinking like a game manager. Remember, I mean, in five years, I mean, he's been on the field four and a half of them, and there's a relationship there that you know how we're going to call a game from a, from a management standpoint, and then you're how the coordinator's going to call a game from a play standpoint. And I think that, you know, he's doing a really good job of that. And again, it's one thing to, like, pull it at the right time, but pull it at the right time when it's, it, can get, it, it can get boring and boring and boring and boring. And then keep reading your reads. And next thing you know, it comes spitting out. And uh, he said he got faster in the offseason. He looked a little faster. I mean, I thought he looked a little faster, so credit to Dan Nickel and and Jake and, and Ben and Willie, I mean, they did a great job, our strength coaches, of getting him faster. That's what he says. He says he's faster. You have one more for coach or everyone else? I don't else even know if we have a 40 time to compare it to. I don't even know if we made him run that. <laughs> we'll guys? take it from Rowell High School. You know, we'll, take, we'll take it from there back in his, his high school. PG, you guys are in 12 and 3 in the last 15 road games. What's been the key for you guys to have that success? 1 and 0. I know that's not the answer you want, but it's 1 and 0. And we'll play anywhere. You know, that's the mentality we have. We, we rotate our practice fields. You guys all know that. We'll go to the stadium. We'll go in the indoor. Uh, we'll go outside. We'll go to the short field. Uh, we go to the Viking. You know, we'll go practice in the Vikings. I mean, we do all of that to prepare them, and we talked about this before, for the season of getting yourselves around different environments, creating different environments. Even when you go to the Vikings, drown them out with noise so they can't hear anything. They're in an unfamiliar environment. They can't hear. They don't even know where the tick marks are. They're chalked on the field, and it makes people – practice and succeed and perform in chaos. Um, and then even even today, just preparing for the environment we're going to have today. Um, you know, and so no stone left unturned. And you got to give Northwestern a lot of credit. Really good football team, like I said. Very well coached. It was a really hard game. The score doesn't reflect how hard this game was. Um, but we're 1-0 in the Northwestern Championship season. And now we got to uh, enjoy this one tonight. Uh, start watching some film about Illinois on the way on the flight home and, and get our oar back in the water. But very proud to be bowl eligible. I mean, we're never going to overlook that. We never take anything for granted. Uh, we're humbled uh, to be in the bowl season this year somehow, some way. With four left, we get to determine which one um, we get to go to. So uh, it's in our control, and that's all we want to be able to do. One to know next week. All right. Thank you, Tom. Road Boats guy, Mago Gophers. Thanks. Just in the uh, effort of being as efficient with our time as possible, does anyone care if I – Move this out, move the table over, have two tool once, let's have a pass back and back and forth. Who uh who do they got? We have Tanner, John Michael. Okay. Um Mariano and Mike Adu. Three Illinois natives. Guys are on the way. Okay. I didn't unplug it. It's way easier. So there's no one plugged in the mailbox, right? Sir, so are you getting the players or no? No. So do I need to use the microphone? No, you have to use Perfect. the Thank you so much.
six guys and you have tight ends in there. Uh, just made things happen for those guys. It really makes it go. Uh, and then obviously can't take any credit away from those running backs too, being able to uh, see things get extra yards. Uh, it's pretty pretty remarkable to see. And, uh, again, it just shows our identity, uh, just how physical toughness and those guys being able to be physical up front uh, and then being physical with the ball in their hand too. Walk us through your uh, touchdown. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the most green grass I've seen in my career. Uh, but. Yeah, it's, it's just the read, and um, the guy crashed, so I had to pull it. And I, had to, I think he kind of redirected it, so I think I had to get a little hezzy for a second. And then when I took off, I was like, that's a lot of green grass. Um, so it worked out well, and then you know, Bucky had a phenomenal run on the next one. Uh, with that outside zone, just, you know, just going. Just, just keep, he just kept going. It was like, oh, it's 10 yards. Oh, 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 touchdown. And then, so that's just what he does when he gets the ball in his hand. So again, it just all comes back to working everything together. Uh, with everyone's reads and doing their jobs. It looked like a fun moment on the sideline to follow the quarterbacks, what was going on. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. It was just, you know, not many people expected. And you know, it, it's fun when you get those opportunities. And, yeah. uh, cool, and you got to cheers from the field. Tanner, you're working your speed in the offseason. Could you feel it in that run? No, a lot faster. <laughs> uh, I'll see when I watch the film. I, I, I think I probably felt a lot faster than I'm going to look on, on film. But, yeah, I mean, it's something that we uh, constantly work on. And, so I'm glad that it, it paid off a little bit right there. Don Michael, what did it mean to you to come back here and, and play in your home state? I mean, yeah, I'm from Illinois, about uh, 30 minutes south of Chicago. Yeah. I mean, it's it's home for me, so I mean, it's special just getting back. I had about uh, 22 uh, family and friends oh. come out, so it was a big group. And, uh, just the support here is just great. Uh, and it was also a good win uh, just to top it off, so yeah. Over 300 rushing yards again. Uh, what does that make your line feel like? I mean, our all line special right now. We're playing, we're seeing the game through one eye. That's what we, uh, I mean, it's not me, but we, that's what we've been talking about the whole week. Um, we're playing as a unit right now, five, five as one. And uh, I mean, those young backs are special. I mean, they're making some great plays. I'm just, just the reads they're making. Yeah. John, like, how does the line not change its business, for lack of a better term, regardless of who's back there? I mean, you've had so many different guys running behind you now. They're all different and unique, but how do you approach it every time a new guy comes in? Definitely, definitely. I mean, no matter who's back there, I mean, we're just just got our foot down. We're, we got our head down. We're grinding all the time. I mean, it's our identity to run the ball. We're not going to stop. No matter who's in the backfield, we're just going to keep running. I think it's a great leadership for those guys too. Um, they love being able to, to have those guys follow. I mean, all five of those guys, five, six of those guys, are a lead job of leading everybody, and especially leading those guys too. Tanner, how important was uh, Mike Brown Stevens today? Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was awesome. Uh, the guy can play ball at a really high level. And, uh, when he gets the ball in his hands, he does a lot of phenomenal things. He's able to create a lot of separation. And I love throwing a 22. Um, yeah, he, he, he made a big impact for us today. Uh, to be able to make things uh, click and, and get going. So, yeah, he, he was awesome. Where has he improved this year? I think just, uh, I mean, overall, he's, he's always had you know, the speed, but his consistency has gone uh, way up. Uh, his confidence just continues to, to grow higher because um, you know, he's not just a speed guy. He can make uh, tough catches, too. So uh, just the, the consistency part of you know, the mental part of the game, he's been uh, a lead at. And he's really changed his best in that aspect. And, uh, I, really fun to throw him the ball, and it's fun to, to see him out there uh, on Saturdays. Uh, Tanner, you guys are first place in the Big Ten West and have meaningful games here in November. What does this mean as, as you know, you come to the final month of the season and the pressure that's going to be on you guys? Yeah, one of the championship season. Uh, if you don't win the next one, you're going to go from being first to fifth or whatever it yeah, may be. Right. Uh, any team can beat you in any week, so you have to be at your best. And we're humble enough to know that, that anybody can beat us on any Saturday. On any Saturday. 
Uh, you know, we have to create our past to embrace our past and create our future. You know, 2019, we've been in similar situations. Uh, didn't obviously get the job done where, where we wanted to. So uh, we know that, that we have to just take it one week at a time. Uh, and that's really all it is. Uh, a lot of people can say that. I know you guys probably laugh and just say, I want another championship season, or whatever. But it's really our, our, our mantra, our, our mentality of this game is, is, is all we got. Because if we don't win this week, who knows what next week holds. Is it easier to live that mantra given 2019 that you guys didn't seal the deal then? Yeah, I think so. Because uh, obviously, we have a lot of guys that were on that team. Uh, and know how close we were uh, to, to reaching uh, that vision. You know, being able to play the Big Ten Championship game uh, with an opportunity to go to the Rose Bowl. Um, yeah, I mean, I think just understanding that literally it, it just comes down to the details every single Saturday, uh, finding ways and opportunities to win because if you think ahead or look uh, back at the what you've done, you can play somewhere, anything like that, uh, you just let the door open for teams to beat you. Uh, for us, again, we've got to take a one week at a time use that experience, those guys that have been there, I'll be able to use that to understand that we, we need to live that out. John Michael, being from Swarthmore and having played at HF, were either of the two Big Ten schools in the state part of your recruiting process, these guys, or the Illini next week? Um, yeah, I uh, took a visit to Illinois uh, early on in the recruiting process, but I mean, early on, uh, when I committed to uh, Western Michigan, uh, I was part of uh, Flex uh, uh, crew that he calls. That's still right. here. Um, I mean, I just knew that I was going to stay with him. I believed in him. Um, just the vision he had for his team. And, you know, I, my my goal was the or like my dream when I was little was to play in the Big Ten. And at that time, um, I just want to stick with Western Michigan at the time. And then here we are. John Michael, I saw you nodding when, when Tanner was talking about 2019. How does how does that stick with you? I mean, yeah, it's okay. um, we definitely uh, uh, look back at it and take a lot of uh, lessons from it. Uh -huh. um, of, of course, not uh, uh, getting the job done at the time. Um, it's lesson learned, and uh, yeah, we're ready to go this year. Uh, Tanner, what, what didn't work on those red zone drives in the first half? Uh, yeah, I think it, it just all comes down to finishing. Um, you know, it uh, gave us a couple different looks that were uh, a little unique um, from what we had uh, prepared for, but we're always prepared for what can happen. And, mm -hmm. and had the right calls, we just got to make got to make plays. Got to make a little bit better throw on the first one. Uh, the linebacker did a great job of sitting in the window. You know, they're a very smart, very disciplined team. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, when they take it away, you just got to give guys an opportunity. And, uh, so, yeah, hats off to them, really, for uh, playing us well and understanding kind of what was going on there. But, again, it uh, comes down to execution. It starts with me, and you got to execute better at the higher level. But, uh, yeah, we just got to finish. Uh, when we get down there, when we get the ball moving, no matter uh, what happens, just got to find ways to finish drives. Okay. We're good with Tanner and John Michael. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I like to do Trevor and I don't know if you're going to <laughs> Tanner, thanks. John Michael, thanks. John Michael, appreciate it. Yep. Do you want to take questions for Micah and Mariano? Uh, Mariano, uh, hold them to, to 14 points. You know, I think this is five or six opponents in a row under 24. What's been, what's been key to keep these off the scoreboard? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just focusing on us. Going out there, executing the game plan uh, each and every week. Coaches are putting us in really good positions to do our jobs, mm -hmm. execute at a high level, and it's just coming down to all 11 guys trusting each other and uh, doing their jobs and making plays when it comes to them. Mario, did you take us through your four, four fumble? <laughs> yeah, um, I actually didn't even realize that it got forced. You know, I was just pursuing the ball. You know, we talked about how just always finding the ball plus three, and you know, I, I was able to just hit a guy as he was, as he was going down, and uh, you know, everybody's doing their job, so. It wasn't anything special, it was just, just what we talked about with the how the culture. Did you get, get a good look at, at uh, Justin scooping and scoring, didn't it? Uh, I was throwing around on the ground, so I actually didn't even realize it. And then I saw him like halfway through the end zone, and I was like, oh, man. I mean, uh, <laughs> happy for him, you know, making a play when he came to himself. He seems to be in the, in the right spot for a true freshman. Yeah, you know, he's a really good player. Um, 
really matured. That's that's one thing that I noticed right when he came on campus in the spring. Like this guy is on his details. You know, he's a great teammate, uh, and that shows he's a player. You know, when you're on your details and you're really mature about your, your learning process and, and how much you grow and get better each and every week, that's what makes a great player. And, and you've seen it with the plays that he's, he's making. Uh, Mike, and with, with no trail today, and, and you're, you're back in your, in your home state, what did it mean to you to, to have this game today? First of all, I trail. <laughs> um, being back home uh, after seven years, I um, had some family come up that got to see me play for the first time. Uh, so I'm, it's a blessing uh, to be in this position, uh, just knowing where I was three years ago and the mindset that I was in. Um, but, you know, it takes all of us. Um, Logan got in there and mixed it up a little bit. That's when I get excited when I get to see Logan play on level with him. We had to put our hard hat on. Um, and Rashad and, uh, and Val played very well as well. We obviously don't get to play play, but, you know, it's fun when everybody gets involved like that. Some guys are going to play this play. So. Murray, I know uh, when Derek LeCaptain scored, what was your reaction? <laughs> yeah. Former you know, linebacker. We don't, he's not a running back. He's a, he's a running backer. <laughs> that's, a, that's a little thing that we've trademarked for him. So, you know, he's, he's a back, a backer. So, no, that was really exciting for, exciting for him. Uh, you just talk about a guy that, you know, does what he's asked to do, uh, doesn't ask questions, just puts his head down and works. That's, that's Derek LeCaptain. And uh, he just keeps getting better and better each and every week, whether it be at linebacker. And now he's mixing in reps at running back. And I'm sure, you know, he'll, he'll be taking more reps there uh, just from what we've seen from him. But, you know, Derek is the ultimate teammate, you know. The, the team loves him, respects him, and uh, you know, to see him get that moment is it was really awesome. What have you heard about his, his high school days? Yeah, an all-time leading rusher in the state of Wisconsin, uh, all-purpose yards. Yeah. I, I believe is, yeah. is, the, is the real stat. But uh, hey, you saw him mixing it up out there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I was I had a little tear of joy for, for my guy. We, we thought he was going down, but uh, you know, he spun out of it and, and got a got a touchdown. So that was that was really awesome. For um, you guys were both around, obviously, for last year when you guys were giving up some of the most rushing yards in the entire country. Now you rank near the top of the entire country for uh, holding back rush running backs. What's it feel like this year compared to last year? Like even on the field, like there had to be some anxiety last year, things like that. It's just got to feel better this year. Talk about that. I mean, it's a process uh, every day. Um, I think that every person. We kind of do this during the season, but it's something that we attack during the offseason as well. Is you got to be better at something every day, every week. <clears throat> Once you do that, it, it'll come together for you. Um, and that's something that we saw in 2019. Um, we had to get back to that at the end of the season in 2020. And now that we're in uh, 2021, it's something that we do every single day, whether it's school, whether it's football. We get better at something every week. Um, so that just doesn't happen overnight. Uh, it feels great. Um, but obviously, every week we got to get back to it. We got to hack at it. Uh, Joe Rossi said that you guys have been focused on the run game a lot more this year than, than previous. How would you describe you know, the attention that's been on the as opposed to last year? Yeah, I mean, we actually saw a little transition in 2020 of us getting better in the run game. You know, after the after the break, the COVID break, where we missed two games, and then going into Nebraska and uh, Wisconsin, and that's just focusing on details. First steps with linebackers, hand placement with the line. And uh, it's a fine line between doing a good job in the run game and not doing a good job in the run game. In the run game. And it's just it's small details. And that's what we, you know, we overemphasize details. And, you know, I remember last year Coach Rossi told us, you know, we were going to be a good defense, a really good defense at some point. He wasn't sure when. But as long as we just stuck to the process and got better each and every day, each and every week, you know, that, that result would come eventually. And, and we're still not there, you know. There was that, that final drive in the fourth quarter, um, for the second to last drive in the fourth quarter, they were running the ball on us, and there were small details where we all got to get better, you know, really myself, and uh, just things like that. But just doing your job, small details is, is, is the difference maker. All right, Tanner and, and John Michael were talking about 2019 and how that sticks with them. How do you guys view that year? Being in a similar spot this year and having a November to uh, I think for the most part, it, for me, I think I look at uh, the teammates that we had, um, the camaraderie we had, uh, some of the leaders that we had. Uh, my role as a leader uh, was a little different, um, the way it looked just coming in. Mm -hmm. Having Winston, uh, having Kamal, having Carter.
harder. Sure. They helped me with my leadership a lot uh, as a player. Um, being able to look back on that, um, just the ways of thinking about work every day um, was something that I think all of us really value. Um, and kind of really that next man up mentality as well. I mean, he got into a couple of games where he had to start. Um, you know, on the D line, we had some injuries here and there. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for, for, for me, and I think I can echo it for him, is just like the camaraderie of the team we had and how close we were, how tight we were. Well, everyone all set? All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you.